Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for tuning in. It is Christmas Day, and I decided to film episode two of Lipstick and Libations. This video is different from my normal videos where I'm just getting ready, and I'm gonna have a cocktail, and I'm just gonna talk to you guys and tell you a little bit about what's going on. And we have a special guest, so if you wanna find out who, you have to keep watching. Before we get into the video, if you're not already subscribed, Please subscribe to the channel and turn on your notification bell so you know every time that I upload. I won't keep you guys waiting any longer. If you wanna see how I got this look, fix your cocktail and let's get ready. I am super excited to film today. I don't know, it's Christmas day and Christmas has always been a kind of tough time of year for me because my grandmother died in December and she raised me. And then, you know, this year with my father passing away, his birthday is Christmas Day. So I wasn't sure how today was going to go, but I've been okay so far, you know, kind of like a moment of being emotional and then kind of calm down after that. And just, I'm really trying to stay in the moment focus on today and then i'll deal with all the emotional stuff later but i have not done a lipsticks and libations for you guys in a minute so today i have my cocktail told you guys you were gonna see this in my last haul this is my juicy boost cup from colored rain and in this cup we have the rest of this bottle this is 1800 coconut I love flavored drinks and I tend to not mix them with anything. I just like flavored alcohol on the rocks. And that's what I'm gonna be sipping on while I get ready to take pictures. I'm starting off with the Juno & Co Moonshine Miracle Cream. You guys saw this in one of my last hauls. I do know what palette I want to use today, but I have no idea what the look is gonna be. I am using one of my Pat McGrath palettes, which is also what I used in my last lipstick and libation. So I don't know. I feel like when I want to like really get dressed and get fancy and feel good and I'm in a good mood, Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, any like palettes that I feel like are super luxe just make me feel like, oh, this is a special occasion. Let me grab that one. So I'm going to start off with eyes while we let this sit. I am going to prime under my eyes. I'm going to use my Becca Anti-Fatigue Primer. Told you guys about this, but I haven't used it on camera. It doesn't give any color or anything like that. As you can see, it's just to help with depuffing and it has this cooling sensation to it that I really like. For eye primer, I'm going to start off with my P. Louise Makeup Base. And then I will show you guys the palette and then we're going to get right into it because I haven't used this in a while and I'm excited. Actually, I've never used this palette. I bought it and I showed it to you guys. It was on sale and then I didn't use it. So yeah, it is definitely time. And then I'm going to set this lightly. I'm telling you the products as I'm using them, but like I said, we are not doing an explanation tutorial video today. But I'm using my Juno & Co powder that I just got to set this. I'm going to attempt to use this on my face today and see how that goes. I'm a little worried because of how light it is, but hopefully it's translucent like it says. Our palette is the Pat McGrath. I don't remember which number this is. Mothership. Uh, I love how these don't say it on here. I don't remember which one this is, guys, but this is subversive. I don't remember which number it is. So it's this palette here. Look at these colors. Absolutely gorgeous. And I am playing in this one right here, the blue, because it is a multi-chrome. I don't know if you can see, I'm trying to turn it. There you can see it's a little different. It's like a blue purple shift. There you go absolutely beautiful so we are going to do that one today and it is just so smooth come in 
Uh, yeah, what's up? So that color is going to be the star of the show, but like I said, we're just going to get into it and I'm just going to do my makeup. I'm kind of in a hurry because Donovan is here and we are supposed to take pictures when I'm done. So I don't want to make him wait too long. See, he's going <laughs> to... You got to get down. They can't see you so tall. Came by to eat lunch. We had gumbo and potato salad, which I didn't know he's never seen potato salad put straight in the bowl before. And that's the how I saw it done the first time. If you're from Louisiana, comment below. Let me know. Do you eat potato salad with your gumbo? Number one. And number two, if you do, do you put it in the bowl or do you put it on the side? You don't even eat potato salad, do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was about to say. He didn't eat any of the potato salad. He just ate the gumbo. But I am one of those types that I put everything in my gumbo. I don't just put chicken and sausage or seafood. I put chicken, sausage, and then I put different types of sausage. And then I put the seafood. So it's all like the best combination of flavors together. We ain't skimping on nothing. Ooh, that's dark. So what else you got planned for your day, hiding back there? Man, I got a new massage thing. <laughs> I'm gonna turn that on. I'm gonna lay in the bed. I'm gonna sleep. That's why you tired right now. I've been up since four. Why? I told you. I know, but mm. why you didn't go back to sleep? Because I was at her mom's. Uh -oh. You could have slept on the sofa. You could go take a nap right now. Huh. What? I take a nap and I gotta get up and go drive. You're not acting like, you're acting like it's super far. It's I'm trying to make him go take a nap because I really want to do like a full, full glam look and take our pictures. And he's like, I'm ready to go. I didn't realize you were doing all this. So we're about to meet in the middle on this. But anyway, yeah, like I was saying, Christmas is a tough time of year for me already and then now with this being the first year with both of my parents being gone and not going home for the holidays to see my siblings and my little munchkins my little nuggets I've seen them every single year and this is the first time I'm not so it's a little hard for me because I kind of I'm dealing with some guilt about that but at the same time, you know, it's just like so many things are different now. So it's kind of just like, where do you draw the line and start thinking about your own mental health versus trying to make everybody else happy? This Christmas, I had my competition and then we went to Atlanta to see Janet's parents. And then we came home and I was like, this is my first Christmas in my house and I would like to have it at my house and I'll cook and do all that good stuff and just because I honestly didn't know how I was going to feel. I didn't know if I was going to be upset. I didn't know if I was going to be in a good mood where I could tolerate being around other people. So that's why mainly why I wanted to be home. I'm digging into that shadow I showed you guys, the blue. And it is very, I'm going to wet this. I should have used my mixing medium. I like this because it's like blue, then purple, then he's yawning. <laughs> he's got the itis. He just ate a big bowl of gumbo and now he's like, mom, I'm tired. There is a little bit of fallout with this shadow and I should have cut my crease. Oh man. Other than that, Christmas has been pretty chill. I made my food and I've gotten a lot of text and you know, people checking on me, which is always appreciated and just in general, you know, feeling like Feeling a sense of loss, but at the same time, so thankful because this year was literally like the shittiest year 
in the history of me being alive. I have not dealt with any kind of like Great Depression or any of those other hard times, but this COVID shit was for the birds. And it has been really good for me because I've learned a lot about myself personally and I've grown a lot. I've gotten very comfortable with being by myself, being home by myself, enjoying time by myself. And now it's kind of at the point where I'm like, I need that. And I never ever thought that I would be the one to want so much alone time, but it's also something I've been trying to balance because with coaching and being in a relationship, you know, it's like, hey, Barbara, you still have other people that need your time. So I've learned more so this year than any other time. Like you really just have to use your words and say what you need. You know, people can understand that more than just you being pissed off and walking around with an attitude because you really just need some time to yourself, but you're worried about hurting their feelings, telling them that. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like, I'm just like, hey, I need a day. I need minimal text. I need no phone calls. I need quiet. And it actually is less of a problem when you just say that as opposed to expecting someone to know or read your mind that that's why you're in a bad mood. I'm not talking to you, but if it helps, if you set the expectation, then it goes over a lot easier than you just thinking they're going to know or read your mind. I know this looks crazy. It always looks crazy when I start off with eyes first and y'all know how it comes together. So just hold on. But this eyeshadow is everything. Of course, it's Pat. We're going to blend it out some more. Got a little bit of fallout, so I'm just gonna take my makeup wipe. I wasn't really being careful. I'm trying to decide this year if I'm going to set any New Year's resolutions. I normally don't. I don't think, I don't think I really do that. Mainly because, honestly, since I've started competing, like so many of the goals that I have had have been revolving around that, that I'm just kind of like, I just want to hit my PRs. I want to do well at my meets, you know, that kind of stuff. And I never really think about like other stuff. The life stuff just happens. Y'all comment below and let me know if you have New Year's resolutions. Do y'all do like fitness stuff? Do you do financial stuff where you want to save money or maybe work on a relationship that hasn't been good that you want to try to make right just whatever I know people have different things that they do some people say ah, oh, you shouldn't wait till New Year's blah 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 whatever your motivation needs to be it doesn't matter what other people say so don't stress yourself about that just trying to make sure this matches hoo low it All right, concealer, this is new. I'm using the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer and this is in the shade Golden Honey. Better not. Oh, that's a little yellow. It'd be interesting to see how you blend it. <laughs> oh yeah, he hasn't watched me do my makeup since he did my makeup. So now he's watching what I actually do. Maybe I should have explained so you would actually know what the steps were. But I have a lot of stuff that I'm looking forward to for next year already. I'm looking at stuff that I can do to help expand my powerlifting team. I have already accomplished my goal of getting back on the platform. So now my next meet that I signed up for, actually I signed up for before COVID and then 
actually before I got hurt. So last year, and um, it ended up getting canceled because of COVID, which was a blessing for me because they would not give me a refund, even though I was hurt. So now I'm like, oh, well, that worked out because I'm not hurt anymore and I can compete. So that meet will be in June in New York. And that's on my list of to do's. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do another one before then or not. I have one on my list, but I don't know. I don't want to make things like I'm still recovering and my knee is actually still healing. So I don't want to go too crazy and trying to act like I'm like 100% healthy and then end up injuring myself again. So I'm trying to figure out how to best manage that because I love competing and I love being on the platform. So as an athlete, my first thing is like, I want to get back I want to get back and I just need to be smart about it so team is doing well people have commented in my videos asking if I do personal training and I do so if you need help with your fitness goals I can help you with that I don't know that I've actually like I talk about beauty and strength but Beauty and Strength comes from my powerlifting team, which is Relentless Power Systems. And that's where the whole you can be strong and be beautiful thing comes from. Because even at my meet that I just did, one of the guys there was like, yeah, she's halfway through the meet and still doesn't have a hair out of place. And I mean, of course, like, yeah, you want to look good because it was live stream and everything else. But it's not like... I'm in the bathroom between lifts, like re hairspraying my hair or doing something like that. Like I do my makeup at the beginning of the day. I know what products work for me to last all day. So once I do my makeup, that is it. I don't need to do anything else to touch up the whole day. Comment below and let me know if you guys want to see like my meat day makeup. That'll be fun because my last meat. I literally went from like 6 o'clock in the morning till 2 o'clock the next morning and my makeup still looked good. So I can show you guys what products I use for that. I'm just going to set this real quick and we are not going to bake. Are we going to bake? I don't know how this powder is going to do baking. So we don't need to look 50 under the eyes. I should have said 80. I can look 50. I'm close to it. Close enough. I definitely do feel like that is blurring some stuff. Got powder all over my shirt, but it's fine. So you see, it's blended. Don't even gonna make me take this picture with half of my makeup done. How many layers of eyeshadow did you do? Um, I did quite a few. I don't feel like it kept... I don't know. I feel like I did the first layer and that's just how it looked like adding the additional layers didn't really help build it up any like maybe it made it a little less transparent but I don't feel like it helped like make the color show more. The color was just there if that makes sense. Do you have any New Year's resolutions? Um. Mainly just investing in my money and learn how to save, put it in the right places. And I realized that that in itself helped me a lot emotionally. So I felt more stable, even if it wasn't a lot. It was just the fact that I was able to do it and consistently do it. And even from early February when I started to now, I'm still doing it. So I wouldn't say it was a New Year's resolution, but that's probably the closest thing that I could say. So just continuing to save money and make yourself more financially stable? Investing and making smarter decisions. Mm -hmm. Doing more things that um, have a more positive effect in terms of long term. Instead of just looking at things for the moment. I like to focus on the moment, not the moment. The movement, not the moment. That's what I meant to say. 
I just used my Natasha Denona contour sculpting powder and now I'm going to use my Bare Minerals Bounce and, Burr, Bounce and Blur blush. I have trouble every time in Mauve Sunrise, which is this dark red kind of pinky. I think it goes well enough. Um, yeah, that was one of my things I told myself like you know, getting everything set up for my channel, the money I spent for the camera, the money I spent for the lens and lighting and all that stuff. I was like, okay, you have everything set up the way you want it. Everything looks good the way you want it. You don't need anything else as far as that goes. And I literally have enough makeup that I could never buy again. And you guys could see something new probably for six months, if not more. So I was like, it's a good time to go on a low to no buy. I'm using my Pat McGrath highlighter. Donovan, I'm going to hand you this just so you can feel. It is so heavy. Like, absolutely ridiculous. It's so expensive. And it's because, honestly, like you're paying for the packaging. Because it literally feels like this is a brick of gold. Hmm. Is it good? Oh yeah. Pat McGrath is probably like complete brand. Well, there's some stuff that she's missing, but her eyeshadows are probably my favorite. Her and Natasha Denona. Yep, still adding more guys. We're glowing to the gods today. It is Christmas. I'm gonna light up like my tree. Merry Christmas, by the way. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um. But yeah, so I'm going to go on a minimalist buy. Probably not buy anything makeup related in January. Although they always have more sales. That's how they get me. Because I'm like, don't spend money. God damn, that's the second time I've done that. I have dips in this thing because I have dropped the top in it twice. When I opened it to swatch it and then just now. I'm guessing you can't turn that part upside down. Huh? What? The part that you have to... Yeah. Oh, to close it? Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that. So smart. Hmm. So feel how heavy this is. Oh, wow. Right? Like, that thing literally feels like gold. So, yes. Anyway, trying to... I'm telling myself I'm going to go on a no buy in January maybe even in February because I really just want to get back to a point of saving especially you know buying a house this year and the remodeling that I did I just need to kind of build things back up and I'm sorry like I love don't get me wrong I love doing YouTube but I'm not making money off of this I just started and I'm not getting sent PR. So this is all my money. So every time something comes out new, I'm not going to go buy it just to be like, oh, I need to do a review. And I kind of got caught up in that when I first started because I wanted to stay in what's trending and make sure, you know, if people are going to find me, they're going to find me because they're looking for the newest things. And I was just like, that's true. But at the same time, like... You got bills, boo. You can't be just wild and spending money on everything that hits the shelf. I could be like ratchet as hell and like buy it and review it and then bring it back to the store. I wonder if people do that. Probably. Probably. But it's so wasteful because they throw that stuff away. They don't reuse it. So I don't feel right doing that. So, nine times out of ten, stuff that I buy is stuff that I'm really, really interested in or it's like, I have to want it. I mean, I ain't going to just buy something to review it and I don't want it. There's no way. So, it has to be something that I want for my collection that I think other people are going to want to see and that it's going to do well because otherwise, it's just a waste. But what I usually do when I'm trying to save money, I take... I wait until the end of the month and I try to keep my checking account like to where it doesn't go over a certain amount 
So at the end of the month, if it's over that amount, then I move whatever's extra into a savings account. Mm. So I don't have it just sitting there thinking that I have extra money to spend. And that kind of helps me keep my spending in check because I have a maximum amount that I want that I want to keep my account at. But at the same time, because I'm OCD, I start freaking out if my account gets below a certain amount. So that's how it keeps my spending in check. Because I'm like, okay, yeah, you did good and now you move money and now you're at your normal. But if you start spending too much by the end of the month, if you're under, that just, I literally start acting like I'm about to need to go take out a loan and go bankrupt. That's really smart, actually. Hmm. And that's how I do my savings. Sometimes... I'll put money in at the beginning of the month to force me not to spend more because then it's never in my, it's not in my account for that month. And it's not, you know, like I'm living check to check or anything like that. It's just I do treat it like I am. So even though there's a little extra money sitting there, I'm still just like that money's not there. You have this amount that you're making this month and that's it. And you don't need to spend more than that. Other than student loans and my house and my car, I'm fortunate I don't have credit card debt or anything like that because I never put more on my card than what I can pay off. And that has kept me out of trouble. So tell me your dream job. Like if you could say, I want to do this for the rest of my life, what would it be? Um, Even if it's your own business, whatever you're thinking. That's definitely what I think it would be. Something where I can really control it. Um, I don't like the idea of somebody else being in control of my income. Somebody else telling me when I can and can't make money. Somebody else telling me when I can and can't get a raise. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And through stock trading, I'm able to control every aspect because it's only an individual doing it. It's all about you, all about your discipline. Any mistakes you make is your fault. It's nobody else to blame but you. And I love that because it's all in my hands. Um, but in terms of an actual dream job, I don't even know if I have one. I have a lot of different things that I want to do, but it would all stem from, I would say, stock trading and eventually opening a business of my own. Once that one gets uh, I guess I can say stable eventually branching off into another one that's kind of what I really want to do in the long run but I don't know if I could say I have a dream job might not be answering your question but mm. okay so if you did have to have a 9 to 5 had to I have to be in a management position of some sort Managing what though? Like, what do you think you would be good at? That's what I'm trying to think. Honestly, I, I would. I, I actually love to coach. I think I'd really like that. Coach what? Um, more in specific, basketball. I think I'd really enjoy that. You can create a really good relationship with the uh, team. I've personally had a coach in high school who was able to impact the lives of the students in the school just through his coaching and it's a very big thing and there's a lot of testimonies out there about that but coaches can really make a difference in someone's life and it's not just about playing sports that's just a means of doing it so I feel like that would probably yeah I think that would be it if I had to choose one yeah I don't know what the salary is but I would enjoy it Something I'd actually look forward to. I gotta actually enjoy waking up to go do. Yeah, I kind of thought for a while, like if I could just do coaching and do powerlifting and only that, I would be happy with that. And I think it would be good for like my primary kind of, if it was like my main thing, but I would probably do something else because I'm too much of a busybody. Like I want. I can't just sit still like COVID happened this year and I was like, oh, now I'm working from home. So that means I'm saving an hour driving and then not being able to go to the gym. So I'm saving more time, not having to drive there. 
And then the next thing you know, I'm like, oh, I have all this extra time, so now I'm going to start doing YouTube. And so now I have a schedule that I have to stay on for that as well. So it's just kind of like the minute I have free time, I find something else to do because I can't stand being stagnant at all. That's actually where I get that from. I'm not as uh, intense with it, but I get really... It's a very strong topic, but depressed if I'm not doing anything productive for a certain amount of time. Like I literally feel depressed. <laughs> so I, I can completely understand that, and I know where I get it from. Yeah, I just feel like it's a blessing and a curse because there are some times where I'm like, you need to slow down. You need to stop. Your body needs you to chill. And then there's other times where I feel guilty when I'm sitting down just not doing anything. So... It's a very hard thing to balance, but especially when you're doing something that you love because you don't think of it as being something that's hard or something that you need a rest from because you love it, but even still, it's still activity. It's still work. There's so many times with me playing basketball, I, I forget to eat, forget to sleep sometimes. Well, that's why I had to change how I do filming because... I would start filming and then next thing you know I haven't eaten, I haven't had any water and I start shaking. I don't have like diabetes or anything like that but I do have issues with my blood sugar where if I am not careful I'll start shaking really bad and I'll get dizzy, I'll start sweating and I know it's just because my sugars drop so fast. So I have to be really careful with making sure I'm eating every three to four hours or I'll have issues with that. Would you say the outbreak affected you in a more positive or a negative way overall? I would say positive for me. Me too. And I know that it's hard to, you know, I, I felt guilty even saying like, yes, 2020 was a rough year, but in terms of like what I was able to get done and the things that I've accomplished, this has probably been one of my best years in the last five, uh, three years as an adult. So, you know, yeah, COVID sucked and it caused so many problems and so many people have lost their lives. And then we had all the police violence and the you know, Black Lives Matters and all this stuff going on, but it just, I felt fortunate that working from home and having my gym equipment kind of kept me in a little bubble. So I didn't necessarily feel like it impacted me as much as it did some other people. It was definitely hard to sit and watch what was going on and to hear people talking about you know losing their jobs and family members they lost and all that stuff and you know of course you sympathize with them and you don't want to be that asshole that's like oh well i've had a good year i did da, 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 da. you know so it's kind of just like i'm gonna be sympathetic and i'm gonna listen and just not really say anything because i can't say that it's been that bad for me and I mean, yeah, like I said earlier, I lost my dad this year and he was my last living parent, grandparent, parent, all of it. So, you know, even now thinking about like, okay, if I get married again, my dad's not here to walk me down the aisle. I don't have my mom here to help me get ready, you know, like all the stuff that I had before, I don't have that anymore. So... You know, it makes you look at things differently, but at the same time, I know how bad my dad was suffering and I know what he was struggling with. So I know now that he's in a better place. So yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like what they say is true. A lot of things are what you make it and of course that is not to say like there's some stuff that you just can't there's some stuff that you can't get around 
feeling bad about it or it affecting you. But at the end of the day, I guess I feel like it's just kind of how you use it. And everybody processes stuff differently. I am a very, like if I start feeling like things are going bad or I'm stressed out or something's really affecting me because I'm an introvert, I just kind of withdraw in my shell and do my own thing and kind of, you know, withdraw away from people. And I don't feel bad about it because that's what I need to do for myself. And years ago, I used to not be able to do that, to be able to take that step back and say, listen, guys, I know this is going on and I know we're all stressed and, you know, but I need this for me. I was more worried about what everybody else needed as opposed to what I needed. And then the next thing you know, I'm not feeling well or I'm suffering or something I need is neglected because I've been so worried about helping everybody else that I didn't take time to do what I needed to do. And I've had that happen financially. I've had that happen physically and emotionally. It can affect you in a bunch of different ways. And a crazy side note on that, when things affect you emotionally, it in turn affects you physically and mm -hmm. then it in turn affects you financially. And it just, it's all, it's, it's a catalyst for so many bad things. And something you mentioned earlier, I wanted to highlight on it. When you said, um, when the outbreak was in the beginning stages and you were staying home a lot, that's when you actually learned to be more comfortable alone. Mm -hmm. That was a very strong thing that I think people might overlook. And that was something I actually did too. I enjoyed being alone when I was younger, but it was because I was just playing a game all the time. But now as I'm older, it gave me a lot more time to really think and observe and process everything going on around me and then figure out what I'm going to do next. And that in turn led me to making one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life which is making my primary focus being self-employed. And that all came from the outbreak. And I think if a people, if a people, if people tried to turn negatives into positives, as cliche as it might sound, I think life would be a lot easier than what people would think it would be. And I always say life is just about how you perceive things. That's the simplest way to put it. And, and I used to be one of the most negative people. Oh my God. Like, oh, somebody hates me. Oh, this is going to be bad. Oh, I don't even know why I should try because this is going to suck and I'm not going to be good at this. And just everything was always, if you needed to know the worst thing that could happen, ask Barbara's opinion because <laughs> that was all I ever had to give was a negative opinion about something and that it gets old like people don't want to hang out with people who act like that every time you have something to say to them they have a negative response to it or they doubt you or tell you well that's dumb or whatever like you don't need that negativity in your life that's how i feel about people like oh you have too much makeup i don't need that negativity in my life oh you look like a man you live too much well, you're a man and you don't lift enough. So what does that make you? Like, I don't know. I'm being mean. But that's the kind of stuff, like, I could sit here. I could take all that stuff that people were saying to me for years and just be like, oh, I need to stop lifting because people think I look like a man. Or I need to not do this because so-and-so said I can't. Or I need to just, you know, you're sitting here trying to change your life to make other people happy or meet the ideas of what they have about you and then they're off doing what they want to do and you off trying to do what they want you to do. Being comfortable in your own skin is a very tough thing to do. But once you do it, the rest of the world just gets out of the way. And I'm glad that I've actually been able to understand that at an early age. And even now, there's still people who are going into their 30s people in their 30s, people my age, a little bit younger that I'm actually, I wouldn't say counseling, but giving advice Mentoring. to. Mentoring. Yeah. Giving advice to, and I find it crazy that someone at my age is teaching people who are older than me about life when they have more experience in this field than I do. That's the craziest thing to me. And I thought it was just always because I paid more attention to, like a detail, I guess I can call it. And... It all comes back to just how you perceive it. 
think negative thoughts happens you think positive thoughts happens yeah i used to be really really bad at that like i didn't want to try anything new because i was scared to fail i didn't want like i had my circle of friends i didn't want any new friends i didn't want to be introduced to anybody because what if they didn't like me I didn't want to be seen without makeup because God forbid somebody see me with a blemish. And I mean, hell now, I don't really want to either, but it's not as straight. Like, it used to stress me. I could not go without makeup before. And now I'm just like, like I spent almost the entire rest of the trip after my meet. I put on makeup one day. Never would I have ever done that before. Because it was always just, Barbara, you need to put your best foot forward. Barbara, people are looking at you. Barbara, people are expecting you to look a certain way or be a certain way because you're Miss Barbell Barbie. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm putting that pressure on myself. Like, I seriously doubt, and if they did do it, then they have problems. But I seriously doubt anybody went home after they saw me without makeup on. And had nothing better to do than to sit down and talk about how they saw me with no makeup on and how different I look. First of all, I don't spend hours doing this to look the same. That would be stupid. So, of course, I look different. But for whatever reason, people feel like they need to speak their opinion even when it's not asked. And I didn't realize how much that aggravated me until... Re well, I lie. I knew that aggravated me. <laughs> oh, I'm talking too fast. I'm getting heated. Look. Um... I knew it aggravated me, but I didn't know how much it aggravated me until now that I'm just kind of like, I'm not putting up with anything. And so a lot of stuff that I used to let just kind of slide before, no. That's where I am now too. Not anymore. We're not letting anything slide. I find it interesting. In 2021. How? Oh. <laughs> how we have very similar transitions in like the same time period but like at different stages of our life it's like you're yeah you're starting a lot earlier than i did because i was still your age i was so into i want everyone to like me i want to have all the friends i want to be invited to everything and if i got invited i have to go because we can't miss because then what if we don't get invited again and that would just be the worst thing ever like you know how many stuff i didn't go to this year how many stuff <laughs> you know how much stuff i didn't go to not only because of the covid situation but just because i had a lot going on and i value my downtime days a lot more than i used to so if it's Sunday, I'm not going anywhere. Like, it is very rare that I leave my house on Sunday. But I'm... Oh, God, I forgot I can't do this with this. Tweezers. I'm happy that you're finding your own voice and being more proactive with setting boundaries and letting people know, like, where you stand on things. Yes, sometimes it is not worth it to even waste your time telling people because they're not going to get it and that's fine like they don't have to as long as you know what you're doing something for what you stand for that's enough that's actually the person I'm dating now that's one of the biggest things that we talk about is just being able to have your own voice being able she is um, she's been working at the place she's working at for about I think going on 10 years now so she's, she has a very high position. She's a manager, essentially. Um, so as a manager, you should be able to have that voice to say, this is wrong, this is right, this is what we should do. And since we've gotten together, I've noticed it's starting to come out of her a lot more. She's starting to be more comfortable with telling her truth. Notice I said her truth. And standing on things that she believes. And that's something I found very interesting is I'm like, when did I make that change? Like it's hard to really look back and then see the changes that we made in ourselves unless we had a third person perspective. So it really helps me reflect on myself and be like, when did I make this change? When did I start to think this way? What was it that caused me to think this way? 
do you know what caused you to have any like major light bulb moments? Like was it specific events? Just time periods? Series of I think it was more just realizing that no matter how much I try to make other people happy, there's always going to be somebody who has something to say. Somebody who's not going to like my choices or even though like I got 60 people or 90 people that said I did something great and that it motivated them, there will still be 10 people who say that was trash, that was stupid, I don't know why you did that, that was, you know, whatever. So when I started meeting more people who were telling me that I motivated them and I was like, wow, I'm motivating people doing what I want to do, doing what makes me happy. And it's giving them an outlet to feel like they can do it too. I was just like, this is so much better than sitting here trying to please people who aren't even trying to do the same things as me like I'm worried about people who don't work out saying that my working out is stupid and it's wasteful and I'm conceited you know it's just like oh I'm sorry I didn't realize being worried about my health was conceited I didn't realize wanting to set a better example for my son was me being a bad person because in our family we have obesity, we have diabetes, we have heart problems, we have drug addiction, we have alcoholism, so many bad things. Nobody in my family works out, but us. I didn't think of that. Nobody. Wow. Wow, even on the other side. No. So it just kills me because I just recently had somebody on my Instagram comment your genetics are crazy and I'm like what genetics though I didn't get this from my mama I don't know my dad my father so I can't say if maybe I got it from him but at the end of the day regardless like he could have decided to be a little fatty pants and not do anything even though I was doing stuff like it's not genetics does not make you get up and go to the gym genetics does not motivate you to say I'm going to do this different. I'm going to make this change because it's so much easier to just stay in a routine that you're comfortable with. You know, genetics does not make me, despite my shoulder hurting or my back hurting or when I was going through my rehab, genetics didn't make me push myself to try to break up scar tissue and try to still get back to where I was before when I was lifting at my best. That's not genetics, that's grit, that's heart. That's determination. You don't get that passed down through a gene ever. So in case you didn't realize I was kind of pissed off about that comment. But we just did all that talking in my face. It's done. Ooh, look at that contour. Look at them cheekbones. So we just rambled and I love this look. He's ready to go, so we need to go take pictures. I hope you guys enjoyed this little talk, rant, Christmas Day, get ready with me, episode two of Lipstick and Libations. I enjoyed filming it, and I know I need to do more of these because sometimes y'all want something different, so I'm going to try to do that. I hope you enjoyed our talk. More mother-son bonding time, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please subscribe. We'd love to have you join the family. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.